When I went to church on Christmas Eve in 2004, and I made that decision to rededicate my life to the Lord, I stopped using drugs, I stopped the drinking, I quit smoking, you know, all of that stuff, you know, I just stopped doing it. Mike Palambi's bad life began when he was a young boy and the constant target of his father's violent temper. And I'd hear him, you know, coming up the stairs and I'd hear the belt being removed. He'd walk into the room, five, six, seven, eight years old, and the last words he'd say is, if I hear a sound, you're gonna get it worse. It left me feeling unloved. And it left me feeling devalued, you know, I didn't. So growing up, I just believed the lie that my life had no value. As Mike's fear of his father intensified, so did his anger, which he learned to unleash on his classmates. My father's treatment of me home made me feel bad about myself. Me fighting with other people and beating them up made me feel good about myself. And you get a lot of respect when you win a lot of fights, right? When Mike got kicked out of high school, he began drinking and using drugs. He also started dating a young woman whose father ran a loan shark business. He recruited Mike to be a strong arm man collecting debts with brute force. One day, Mike was sent out to collect from a client in a hotel parking lot. I said, no, you're gonna give me the money today or you're gonna get hurt right here. He looked me in the eye and he smiled and he said, I ain't giving you nothing. I punched him in his head, ripped his watch off his hand. I went to hit him again and I, I, I heard something and I looked and all these guys with guns running out of me, I'm thinking, I'm dead. He, he set me up and I'm gonna get killed today. Mike had been set up. He was arrested and sentenced to three years for extortion. While in prison, he lost a card game to another inmate. And when he paid up, the inmate demanded more money. Mike refused, and when the inmate returned to his cell with backup, Mike decided there was only one way out. And as soon as I was gonna stab this man in his throat, I heard a voice ask me out loud, how's it feel, tough guy? How's it feel to genuinely fear you, you're gonna lose your life because someone's threatening you to pay a debt you don't owe? How's it feel, tough guy? Didn't feel so good. Every cell in my body was consumed with shame. The scales fell from my eyes and all of a sudden, I saw myself for exactly who I was, drug addict, a criminal, and I knew I deserved to be exactly where I was. Mike had gone to church as a child and believed the voice was God's. He agreed to pay, and the man left. He gave his life to Christ and grew in his faith while in prison. But once released, he started to drink and do drugs again. Nearly two decades had passed when Mike left behind a failed marriage and moved into the building he was restoring as a carpenter. There, he met Heidi, a Christian, who had been hired as a painter. I could just tell that he was down and out. He wasn't in a good place. I mean, he was sleeping on the third floor in a blow-up mattress, so I knew things weren't going so well. So I just prayed for him. Heidi kept inviting Mike to church, even stopping by on Christmas Eve to offer him a ride to the service. Mike declined and retreated to the third floor to drink. Then he walked out onto the balcony. And this voice just starts talking in my head. You're good for nothing. He'd be better off to jump off this balcony and end it now than to fight the battle. You're gonna to have to fight to reclaim your life. And I believe that voice. Physically, emotionally, <laughs> in any way a man could be broken, I was broken and I just felt hopeless and I didn't see any way out. And then I heard this other voice speak to me. And it said, Mike, we spoke 20 years ago in a prison cell. Your enemy today is the same enemy you had 20 years ago. You're your own worst enemy, and you gotta save yourself from yourself. Mike heeded the second voice and drove to the Christmas Eve service in time to hear the message. It pointed to the kind of life I was living, and Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted and set the captives free. It was like a man receiving food within minutes of dying who was dying from starvation. And that's when I settled it for sure. Jesus died for no other reason than to save me from my sin. And I made a decision that night that I was gonna 
give my life back to the Lord, and I made that decision on Christmas Eve 2004. Mike and Heidi married a few years later. Together, they lead a recovery group at their church. Mike has forgiven his father and let go of his anger for good. He doesn't have a spirit of anger anymore. He really doesn't. There's a spirit of peace about him. And each year at Christmas, Mike celebrates his rebirth alongside the birth of his Savior, who makes all things new. The worst moments in my life have brought about the greatest moments in my life. And if you can just hang on, your worst moment is going to become your greatest moment. You just have to be willing to say, I surrender. That's it.